All right, well, Casey here with CL Creative, where I'm teaching you web design and web flow one video at a time. And today, we are going to talk about the most efficient way to build a section. Webflow has come out with their new Webflow University 101, and they're walking through building different aspects of a website. And one of the things that they're talking about is how do you build a section? And I'm not necessarily saying the way that they build a section is wrong, certainly their Webflow, they know what they're doing, but I wanna show you a better, more efficient way to build a section that's gonna allow you to keep consistency throughout your website as well as I'm gonna show you how to turn that section into a symbol so you can reuse it over and over again, increasing your build speed. So let's jump into the computer and check things out. All right, well, here we are in the computer and we are on my Webflow dashboard. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the client first clonable. So if you head over to the client first website, to the resources, you can scroll down and this is what you need, client first clonable. Alternatively, you can Google Webflow client first clonable and this will show up. It'll typically take you to this page right here in Webflow. So we're gonna clone this website into Webflow. We're gonna stay with Casey's fabulous site, but feel free to name this whatever you like depending on whatever site it is that you are working on. This is gonna open up for us, and essentially it's going to be a blank project except for where the magic happens on the style guide. And so there are all of these different classes within the style guide that have been created for you according to the client first system. You can see all of these here. We're not gonna go through exactly how to set this up or change things inside of the client first style guide today. We'll do that on another video, but for today's purposes, we're going to build a section. I just wanted to show you this is where the magic happens. So if we go back over to the home page, we essentially have a blank project except for this starter section. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. All right, so as you think about setting up your project, one of the things that you want to do is you're gonna have your body, you're gonna have your page wrapper, your global styles if you're building in the client first system, as well as your main wrapper. And inside of your main wrapper, this is where all of your sections are going to go. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're gonna put a section on the page. You could do this in a number of different ways. You can just put a div block down on the page or you can utilize the add menu over here in Webflow and add a section. So I'll go ahead and add that. And one of the things that I'll show you and really the only difference between a section and just a regular div on the page because this is representative of a regular div is the symbol that comes with it. There's no real advantage to using this except for that maybe it's a little bit easier to see what are your where your sections start as you scroll down on the left-hand navigation bar, which is essentially your HTML structure. So you have just a box or you have a box with two lines in it representative of a section. We'll go ahead and leave this here. The first thing that we want to do, particularly within the client first system, is we want to name things correctly. And so we're gonna say section underscore. And typically here, if you're building your website and you're building out a particular section on a website, you would say something like home header. So it's the home page and it's the header section. Now I'm not going to do that here because we're going to create a reusable section that will allow us to build faster. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And all I'm going to leave in this particular class creation style selector panel, uh, the only class I'm essentially I'm going to create is section underscore at this point. And you'll see why in just a moment. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to add some nested divs. So all I'm going to do to do this is just do command E and type in D I V. And as you notice here in the center of the screen, div block. So press enter. Now what that does is it actually just nests a div inside of our section. And we need to do this three more times. So let me just do that. And one more time. Okay. So what we end up with is our section with four div blocks nested inside of one another. And we've done this for a reason. So we're gonna click on the first div block here and we'll go over here to our style panel. And what we need to do first is we need to add some padding. So padding global. Uh, this is the particular style within the client first naming system. But essentially all that it's doing, as you can see here, 
is it is putting two and a half rim on the left and two and a half rim of padding on the right. And so if we zoom back out, you can see that padding here. I click back on my padding global and over that you see the green boxes. This is so that a picture or text is not smushed right up upside the, the you know, window within your website. It's not what you want, not a good look. So we have our padding global. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add a container. And so we're gonna add container large. Essentially what that does is you can see as I'm hovering over the spacing section, you have the blue, blue on the left, it is creating auto margin for us, 100% width so that it's spanning the whole width. And here's where the magic is, it is limiting our content that is gonna go inside of this div box to a max width of 80 rim or 1280 pixels. Now here's what you don't want to do. Go over to the add panel and click container. The reason for that is that it's going to add a container to the page. It's going to do it exactly the same thing that you see happening over here, except for that it's going to limit it to 960 pixels. That's a little bit small, you know, at least I think so, as far as the width on the website. I like to build at like 1280 pixels for desktop. Um, so this is why I use 80 rim. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create some padding or some height to our section. So section padding, and we're gonna, if I zoom in here again, we're gonna use padding section large. Now this really doesn't mean much, it's just a way that it's being named, but what you can see is it's created some padding on the top and the bottom of the section. So this is gonna give your section some breathing room from section to section. Now here's what I do, and this is where I break from the client first system a bit. It's not a hard and fast system. You can do whatever you want, whatever makes life easier for you. But instead of leaving this padding section large, I go ahead and duplicate it and I change the name to padding section sidewide. That way I know that this is the padding that will be used site-wide. And if I have some sections that don't call for eight rim or, you know, you can adjust this, say, you know, you want it bigger or you want it smaller, like say six rim for every section, the padding between them is going to be six rim, whatever you want. I, I use padding section site-wide so that I know that this is the padding that I am using site-wide. And if there are sections that call for me not to have as much padding, I know because I can look over here on the left sidebar and see that the padding section is different from site wide. It's just something that I do. The next thing is your component. So not every time, but 99% of the time, what's gonna come next is some sort of component. And so what we're going to do here to set ourselves up, what I would typically do is I would say like, you know, home header component but we're building reusable section. So all I'm gonna do is set myself up for success and I'm gonna say underscore component. So if we zoom in here, underscore component, I'm gonna create the class. All I have to do is duplicate this and then click on the front of this and type in whatever that is. Now I'm not gonna put any sort of layout on this component because I want this to be a reusable section. All right, so we have built our section structure. Again, our section structure consists of a section top level, Padding global, which is providing us padding on the left and the right, as well as the container large, which is limiting our content, our padding section site wide, which is going to be providing us padding on the top and the bottom, as well as a component, which will allow us to build whatever we're going to do inside of that particular section. Now, here is where we can use the power of symbols. I click on the section. We can close this if you that makes it easier. And I click on the component section. I guess it's called components. It used to be called symbols, but components. I'm gonna create a new component and I'm gonna name this component section. Now we have a section component. Here's the thing that you need to do after you have created that. You need to unlink this from the main component that is over here in our components bar because any changes you make to this is gonna be reflected within this component here. And we don't really want that to happen. We want it to stay consistent just like it is. So you can do this in one of two ways. You can right click 
You can go down to unlink instance. But what I would suggest if you're going to build this way is to memorize the shortcut, which is simply shift command A if you're on a Mac. So let's do that. Shift command A. Now I've unlinked that and I have a section. So all I have to do now, if I want to add another section to the page, what I could do is I could just do command C to copy it, click back on my main wrapper, command V, I have another section ready to go. Or if you've already built in this section, you don't want to copy that section per se. You just want to add another standard section to the page or you've gone to a new page. Well, you just click on your main wrapper, command E, which is a shortcut to bring up the bar or search bar. Start typing section. You don't want to click on the first one, but you want to click on the component. If you click on that, you have your component section laid down on the page. Remember our shortcut, shift command A, which will unlink that section for us. All right, so here's where things can get nice and well, this will help speed up our build process. So command A, start typing section, boom, shift command A again, we are ready to go. We have four sections on the page. You could just copy and paste another one if you want as well. Makes things very fast, very easy for you to do. All right, that's how we set up a section in Webflow, and that's how we make it reusable. So let's go a step further and actually build something in this section. So we're gonna open up our section down here to our component. Well, let's we'll go back up to the section, and we're gonna make this a home header. And this is important right here. So let's zoom in. We have section underscore. Now, if I were to add home header to this, if I just clicked in, added home header guess what's going to happen affects six elements so if we zoom back out and we zoom over here we see section home header section home header we don't want that to happen we want to create separate classes for each section on our page so let me just command z and back out and show you the best way to do this you're going to go over here you're going to click on the down arrow and instead of rename class you're actually going to say duplicate class it's going to create a section copy click into that go to the end delete the copy and then you're going to name it whatever it is so in this particular case it is the home header i want to make sure that we don't have a space there so now if you look back over here all of our sections are still section underscore section underscore section underscore and then we can go to the next one and we can do that again duplicate the class and this is gonna be home, say so it's gonna be our home about section, right? And then you can do that over and over again down through the page. So if we go return back to our section home header, we go to our component, this is typically where we're gonna build things. And we'll just build a, a quick standard section. So again, what we wanna do is duplicate that class. We're gonna delete the copy part. And in front of this, we're gonna say home header. So this is our home header component. Now I'm just going to build one with a content on the left and a picture on the right. This is a pretty standard section and I usually use a grid to do this. So I'm going to click on my layout. I'm going to select grid. Looks good. The other thing I might want to do is increase the gap between these two sides, the left and the right. And I typically start on desktop at four rim. So that's what we're going to do here. Now what we need to do when we're working with uh, grid is we need to make sure that we put a wrapper on each side. So we're just building a, a two column grid here. So command E, we're gonna click div, and then we're gonna make sure that we're on the home component again, command E, div. So now what we have is we have two divs on the page. I will name this one right here, home header left. content and this one right here is going to be an image so i'm going to name this home header and it's going to be an it's going to be the wrapper for my image so i'm going to say home header image wrapper now on the left side i'm going to just simply put in an h1 because this is what we use and this is going to be casey's great website a terrible h1 but you get the point 
underneath this, I'm going to throw in a paragraph. And let me actually get rid of that. We're actually going to just leave the lorem ipsum there for our purposes. And of course, we need some sort of CTA button. So we'll have our button and we'll go ahead and give it a class over here. So there's a button class built in and that's that's what we have. All right. We have that. Now on the right side, we're going to put an image inside of our home header image wrapper. And this is simply just going to be home header image. We're going to give it a width of 100% to fill up that box. And we are just going to use one of the images that is already here, this client first image. Now what we have on the left is we have our content smushed up here to the the left side, left top of the box, as well as our content is smushed together. We don't want that look. So what I typically do for the content portion, something like this, is I will use Flexbox. That's going to be horizontal to begin with, so we need to turn that to vertical. And then what I will use is the gap. So say I want two rim of gap between each element there. Now here's where you have a decision to make. You can take this button and you can wrap it in a div or you can align it to the left so it's not stretched all the way across. Webflow has come out with this nice new feature that allows you to wrap elements in divs. So if you click on the button, you right click and say wrap in div block, it's gonna wrap it in there. And we might go ahead and just give this a class of button wrapper so that we know that this is our button wrapper that we can reuse throughout our website. Uh, and the next thing that we might want to do is just center this text with our image over here. And we will use our layout properties, justify it to the center. And there we go. We have created a section inside of Webflow that is going to keep our site consistent, as well as we've turned that section into a symbol that is going to allow us to reuse that section over and over again throughout our website making uh, or allowing us to build much faster. If you've got some value out of this video, would you smash that like button? If you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel. I'm producing content like this on a weekly basis. And if you have any questions or if you have a better way of doing things, then leave that down in the comments below. I'm always up for learning new ways to build faster. Hope to see you on the next video.